My name is Vahid Chitzel, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, Vahid. Thanks for uh, welcoming me here. I am Ann Rusnak, and I'm actually from Cleveland, Ohio. And I, I just watched your last um, guest, and wow, that was, it was pretty powerful. So I feel very privileged to be on this show now. <laughs> Thank you. It, it went a little bit over and I had a little bit more, more questions, but I kind of, I have to sometimes stop myself from getting excited and asking too many questions. Uh, it's staying on, on point, but you know how it is. You know, yes. it's, it's self-development. <laughs> it leads to the other questions. Or either that or I'm just a slow learner and I need to ask a few times. Yeah, he, had some, he had some good stuff. I was like, oh, and I, and I am one of those people who have specialized in productivity. I was picking points up. So, you know, you're, you always learn just because you may be an expert in an area. You can always learn from, from other people. So I feel yeah, like I think if you're an expert, I think you pick up things to sharpen up your tools. Yes, you know the is. basis of it. You mm -hmm. got the foundation. So let's dive into female empowerment and <laughs> entrepreneurship. Why do females have a why do you think females have a limiting beliefs? Well, they're not the only ones who have limiting beliefs, but there's um, a lot of them um, that I feel, and from what my research and stuff, that there's a certain ones that seem to apply to us a little bit more. And a lot of it just has to do with how we've been brought up. And um, in centuries and centuries of, we're discounted for what we bring to the world, you know, and, and, men, um, and men aren't. And I feel that, we have been so deprived, you know, for not having the things that we can bring to the market, things that we contribute. Our world has, could be a much better world. And I'm a full believer that entrepreneur, whether you are a man or a woman, entrepreneurs really change the world. And so I just, I just believe it's going to get a whole lot more better as more and more women are stepping into their power and doing um becoming entrepreneurs because uh you know just i just i just imagine what we can actually do i mean the iphone might actually fit in our hands better because <laughs> it's not designed for just the, the the male and i know when they started designing just for um the sidewalks years ago for people with you know, issues in wheelchairs and stuff so that they could use them. All of a sudden, it became so much easier for everybody else to get on and off the sidewalk. So if we kind of like address those, um, those kind of issues, it really makes life much better for everybody. Well, I think there's definitely a trend. I mean, either that or I'm, I'm surrounded around a lot of powerful females. Either that or I just come across a lot of them because I deal with a lot of influencers and coaches and instructors and, and, and mentors that are female. And I got to tell you, most of the time, I don't, if they have had limiting beliefs, they have definitely resolved those challenges for themselves because I'm not seeing it. Because I see like in my mastermind group, I have two. I have one that's all predominantly I deal with females and then mm -hmm. I've got one all just male driven and male driven is kind of little, we're a little bit more comfortable in our mastermind group when we do <laughs> zoom we're, we're it's easier to talk a lot of guys watch what they say when there's a female present but with the guys we just shoot the shit you know we're just like hey what'd you do or your ass was lazy or you did this or you didn't do this so we're like a little bit more comfortable dealing with that but i don't see any difference as far as coaching goes Men and female, they both got the same amount of talent, skills, and knowledge, and they could both take someone's hand, go from point A to point B, and be able to do that. So I see it. Now, here's my question. Let's say I'm a female entrepreneur, mm -hmm. and I do have limiting beliefs, but I don't know I have those. How do I recognize that I have those, and I might need helping, coaching, assisting, awareness? Where do I go from there? Very, very good question, because a lot of times you're, you're being stuck. You're stuck in, I'm trying to get more clients. I'm trying to grow my business. I'm following everything everybody's saying, but I'm not seeing the results. And the thing is, you're right. She knows she's talented. She knows she's got what it takes. You know, she's following her heart, 
And, you know, and I was the same one. And that's usually what happens is we find ourselves stuck, guys as well. And that is some kind of belief or some story that you're telling yourself. For me personally, what I discovered was imposter syndrome, where I wasn't even recognizing the success, the accomplishments. I attribute to, oh, that's just luck. And you're living in fear that somebody is going to find out that you don't have all your, and since you did swear, shit together out there before you put your product So hold on, I got a question. Up. So what, is it, what does it mean to have an imposter syndrome? What is that? Define that to me because I, I, a lot of people throw that vocabulary out and I feel like everybody uses it in different contexts. So Very good, yes. I've heard the, the same thing too. And when I researched it, I went, oh my mm-hmm. gosh. And it really, it, it goes beyond self-doubt. We all have doubt. We all have doubt out there. Doubt is normal. We just work our way through it. Apostor syndrome really kind of goes a little beyond just doubting yourself. You really do live in fear of being found out that maybe you really don't know as much as you think you know. Or someone's going to discover that you don't, you don't, like I said, once again, you don't have everything yet. You're not perfect. And perfectionism goes right along with imposter syndrome. And, and one of the things with women, you know, we are, you talk about, you get on Zoom with the guys and they're all relaxed, whatever. A lot of women are still like, is my hair perfect? Am I, you know, are my, whatever is going on, that they get uncomfortable being in front of the camera. Now, I went out and did the thing without the makeup and did Facebook Live. And it's like, okay, I lived, I survived. But there's always that going on in the back of their head sometimes. It's like, I need to be perfect. And so perfectionism, and not that men don't deal with that also, but it's a little more with women because you just look at the magazines and how women, they're just, how they're depicted, um, photoshopped, airbrushed. I actually asked my husband, I says, can I have an airbrush one year so I can just like brush all my flaws away? And, and so a lot of that is starting to break down and I'm seeing in the younger generation with the millennials that they are getting more and more comfortable with who they are. You're seeing more, your body's okay, just the way it is. And that's kind of the, the, the approach and stuff that I, I like to take is that, you know, if you just connect, I go back to your true me, that mystical essence of who you truly are and embrace everything flaws and all and I, I know one of the supermodels called it flossom being you know totally awesome with everything about you and when you start breaking some of that down then you get more comfortable putting yourself out there because whatever has called you to be an entrepreneur that's an answer to somebody's prayer but if you're kind of under that shadow of perfectionism and imposter syndrome you're you that the client can't find you they'll find somebody else because they put that out in the universe that this is what they want this is what they need so you know until you can feel comfortable you know it means yeah being vulnerable not everybody's gonna love you go ahead (laughs) my question is who's the person that's judging us that's perfect I like to find his ass and do an inspection on him or her because that's where I feel like I'm like, okay, let's say I have an imposter syndrome and, and I'm, I have self-doubt and everything else that maybe I don't have it together. Maybe somebody's going to find out. But it logically doesn't make sense to me. That person who's going to come and check me out to find out I don't have my shit together, how do we know they have their shit together? At what point did we decide that that person is the is the judge to see if I have my shit together or not? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, are we talking about this arbitrary person that we created? Uh, it's in our an home arbitrary home? person that you think. <laughs> but there's actually people out there that are going to criticize. And you know what? It's a reflection on them. And once you understand that if someone is judging you, if someone is criticizing you, <laughs> then... You can really, you can almost flip it back and going, you're that mirror reflecting back. So they, it's, it's, it's them personally, it's not you. But you have to reach that point of like, you know, I'm okay with who I am. 
I am not going to reach everybody out there. I'm not for everybody, just the same as you are. You're very lucky that you, you know, it sounds like you have, are very more accepting of people for who they are. But we as humans, we all judge. Within a few seconds, we look and we judge. And then we adjust that. It's like, I mean, listen, I think, is a, I think is a defense mechanism. When mm -hmm. my daughter grows up, I want her to be able to judge if this person is, is, is attacking you or not. Is right. this person coming at you with a knife that wants to kill you? Or is this person coming over with a flower that's a gift? You know, you got to be able to judge those things and be able to use your judgment and your IQ and the way you grow up, the culture, the respect, all of these things come into play. But judging a person for its cover, yeah, you get an idea, but you shouldn't go say, I made my judgment, it's done, and I'm not going to deviate from it. That's what I have problem with because I've judged people from initial contact. I'm like, you know what? He may not be a good coach for me to do an interview, you know? But I mm -hmm. still went and did the interview. And then I was proven wrong, not wrong. I was proven that, okay, I had doubts. I didn't know this, but I recognized that this coach could be good for this type of training. And I'm like, wow, this is cool. Now we got somebody in this area. So I feel like you could judge. It's just that, is that set in stone and you're not going to change and deviate from it? That's what I have problem with. I don't yeah, mind. It's, uh, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of like, it's, it's something we all do. It's that three second, five second looking, you know, whatever. But then you have to get to know the person. Now, with our daughter, same thing. It's like you stand up for yourself. And we brought her up with you with high self-esteem, high confidence, respecting who you are, that you don't take crap from other people. Um, and the same thing with your daughter, you know. Also, your instincts are going to let you know you're going to get little red flag warnings on this is probably not a cool person. Maybe you shouldn't go running off all alone by yourself with this, this guy. But it's, uh, it's going to be with clients. Are you going to always have that perfect client? No. They can, they can be putting on, oh, this looks good. So, you know, I used to have to hire people too. Oh, look at this resume. And you look at the person, what they're doing with the resume, you know, it didn't match. And then you just have to make the decision from there. So it is like, yeah, okay, I made a mistake. All right. Either we correct this or we let it go. And, no, I feel and, like, yeah, I, I agree with that completely because I feel like a lot of people, they're like, oh, don't judge. I'm not like, I'm judging all the time. I'm looking at the color of the cars. I'm judging it. Uh, I'm judging how the weather is. I'm judging the news. I'm judging this. I'm judging the president. I'm judging the vice president. I'm judging the coronavirus. Like, I'm judging all the time. But for me, what has worked is that I'm not like, okay, I had my initial reaction. I got it out of my system. Mm -hmm. Now let me look at it. Let me see what's going on. Is this something that I want to be involved? Do I want to go this route? Is my judgment based on facts? Do I know this to be absolute? And so it's, it's, I think it's not the first three to five seconds. I think that everybody is entitled to do. Just do that. We're, we're all, you need to be able to do that, right? But yes. being open-minded and being able to be, tolerant of other people's opinions and views makes us a good human being, a decent human being. It's okay to disagree. And a lot of times I tell entrepreneurs and business owners, what they think of your business is none of your business. Mm -hmm. Let them think what they want to think. They're entitled to their opinion. Let them do that. So that's what it is. So here's my other question. How important is your surrounding? Let's say I'm a female entrepreneur and I'm having self-doubts about where I want to take my business next or what do I want to do. And sometimes I'm coming through challenges, right? How important is it to surround yourself with people that could support you to go to the next level? Because a lot of times I feel like our comfort zone turns to gravitate us towards the people that may not know how to get us out of that mess. I agree a hundred percent with you. And that is, and it's learning to um, someone. I just love how someone um, coined this and it said, not so much, you're, you know, you're getting out of your comfort zone. I actually say expanding your comfort zone because who really wants to really get out there. Okay. Outside that you expand it. 
someone called it your courage zone. And I absolutely love that because it does take, it takes a lot of courage to be able to go, okay, things aren't working. I can either stay here or I can move forward. And moving forward isn't always comfortable because a lot of times what happens is your subconscious is what's guiding you and it goes on past information. So a lot of times it thinks it's protecting you. Well, I want to protect you from this because it doesn't have anything to, for out front here. That's where faith and trust come in. That's where you trust that inner guidance. That's where like, okay, uh, getting comfortable with mistakes. That was probably one of the hardest things I know for me, for some of my clients as well. It was like, it's okay to make mistakes. And they're not mistakes. It's actually feedback. It's okay yeah, I, I agree to, with that. To, get, to get that feedback. Surrounding yourself, you don't want to surround yourself with a lot of yes people. You do want to surround yourself, have some people that are going to encourage you they can see, uh, oftentimes, somebody can see the potential in you before you're going to see it yourself. And that's the person that you want in your corner. And, I, and I've got one person that, you know, it's just my book would have been written. I wouldn't be able to move my business in the direction if it wasn't for her. Because it was seeing her belief. And I'm going, yeah. Because, I, you know, so it is important to have someone in your corner going rah, rah, rah. But at the same time... Is that person encouraging you to grow? You know, I agree with you. you need it, that it, extra push once in a while. We do need that little butt <laughs> kicking every once. Yeah, and you know, I know I need it at times also. So yeah, we do need that. I was telling one of my buddies, uh, I was discussing it with him, and I was saying, if your business is going to go file for bankruptcy, the way I look at it is, the business is going down, or if you're going to change. Might as well that change come from you. Don't just stand there and react to what's happening. If you're going to destroy it and build a new career, let it be you that is destroying it. And mm -hmm. it. Don't wait for the circumstances to just make that happen for you because that builds your confidence. You could destroy it, but you're not destroying it to destroy it. You're destroying it to build something better and bigger. And we see that time and time. Like, for example... Uh, uh, a little part of history that's about to happen on this video is that this building where I'm sitting in about six months to eight months from this time, this office will no longer be on this planet. They are tearing it down. It's a huge, you know, it's a huge building. They're tearing it down and they're going to make build apartment complexes. So where I am actually sitting today having this conversation with you will be destroyed to build something taller, better, and probably more modern looking than what it is today. So sometimes we got to destroy what we know, the comfort zone, and be able to build it. But one thing that I don't know if you recommend is when you look at the building plan that's going to be constructed here, you have, okay, you're like, okay, so I am destroying it because this is what I want to get. And I feel like a lot of times we don't have this picture, we don't have this architect layout, and we don't see this, all we see is us destroying a building, tearing it down. And they're not going to even destroy it. They're actually going to go deep. They're probably going to go about 20, 30, 40 feet deep. So they're not even just destroying the building. They're, they're removing stuff. They're moving things out to be able to build something new. And I feel like if entrepreneurs, they get that concept, I think it will help a lot. I don't know if that made sense. Uh, it, to, to me, it made total sense because sometimes <clears throat> and you can kind of think of it too like a hurricane you just can't build on top of the you got to clean the mess up and sometimes right. they can't do anything with that building and if they're gonna build something different they couldn't go and build that build the new one on top of where you're at or move it around and and i know and i'm one of them and i know lots of entrepreneurs were like well, I don't like this. This isn't working. Let's and you let that go. It's letting that go and going. I'm going over here instead, and it means building from scratch, putting a new foundation in, and that's part of being an entrepreneur is that flexibility. And as long as you know, hey, if I built it once, I most definitely can do it again. Oh hell yeah, no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. You gotta and listen, 
a, a vision board definitely helps. Uh, yes. Having the goal right in front of your face all the time, knowing what you're working with, picture of your loved ones and who you're working with. Listen, we only get one life. Might as well go through it with all the roller coaster, all the excitement, and all that stuff. Because you you don't want to have any regrets why I didn't start that, I didn't do this, or what one of my fears is, is not regretting not starting. It is I didn't give it my hundred and ten percent. Why why did I why did I leave some fuel reserve in the tank? Why couldn't we just go all out till the last? And, and I feel like listen. I feel like a lot of female entrepreneurs are about to, the next decade is going to be amazing. I it love is it. going to be so amazing, and I I totally agree with you. And you know I don't want to discount the guys because they actually put the foundation in place for us to be able to do a lot of this stuff. You know the internet, the computers, everything broke down a lot of barriers. Um, but even you know, like I said, seeing the um, millennial entrepreneurs out there, I'm like, oh man, I'm so jealous. But. <laughs> Because a lot hey, of but listen, you got wisdom, though. You got right, wisdom, I've got though. the wisdom. I've got the wisdom. And that is, you know, what is imparting my wisdom. I've had, I've had some great male mentors who've imparted their wisdom and female mentors. So, but more and more women now are starting businesses because they're seeing that this is a great flexibility for them around, hey, I want to be home with my kids. I want to be make, you know, bringing income. And, you know, and I believe, and we do a little bit more with that, you know, mindset around money, the money empowerment, because it takes money to make an impact. If I Definitely. have a thousand dollars, I can impact maybe this many people. I have a million, I can impact a whole lot more. And, and so it's getting comfortable with saying, it's okay for me to make money off the gifts that I've been giving. It's basically the value. My, it, I'm here it. to use my gifts to bring value out in the world. And it's all right to be compensated for that. Totally. How do people find you? Well, they can go to annrusnack.com. That's A-N-N-R-U-S-N-A-K.com. And actually, you've got a, um, a cheat sheet up there to help you discover if perfectionism is getting in the way of you being able to create that impact that you want out there. So... Um, lots of great articles. Feel free to come join us. <laughs> Love it. Listen, thank you so much for taking this time out of your busy schedule, being with us this, this morning. Definitely stay safe. Looking forward to doing more stuff with you. Thank you. Bye, Rish. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.